Welcome to Leading with Gratitude Live. I'm your host, Chester Elton, the Apostle of Appreciation, coming to you from the Gratitude Viral Epicenter of the Planet in Summit, New Jersey. You know, we always say, look, give us 30 minutes, we'll give you great information, great inspiration, and your own personal roadmap to gratitude at work and at home. Of course, we're coming to you on the wonderful Methods Network. We're streaming on LinkedIn, Facebook, and YouTube. Well, listen, I'm delighted to in, in, introduce you to my new guest today, Lomit Patel. Let me uh, give you a little bit of Lomit's background and his resume. Lomit is the Vice President of Growth at IMVU. Prior to IMVU, Lomit managed growth at early age, uh, early stage startups, including Roku, who went IPO, Trusted ID, acquired by Equifax, Texture, acquired by Apple, and Earthlink. Lomit's new book, Lean AI, is part of Eric Reese's best-selling The Lean Startup Series and is now available on LinkedIn. I'm delighted to welcome to the show my new friend, Lomit Patel. How are you doing today, Lomit? <laughs> welcome to the show. I'm doing great, Chester. Thanks for having me on the show. Absolutely. You know, uh, we have uh, guests that tune in from all around the world. You know, we stream on Marshall Goldsmith's channel as well. And there's going to be lots of questions. So we have Christy Lawrence at our Question Command Center in Atlanta, Georgia. Let us introduce you. She always has great earrings. Wave to the crowd. <laughs> so make sure you put your questions in the chat box. We'll be fielding those all the time. We're going to be talking about lean AI today with one of the world's foremost experts. And you know, my, my first question for you, Lomit, is there's a lot of talk around AI and there's a lot of anxiety around AI that AI is going to replace jobs. And you know, unemployment is already at an all-time high. You've written this wonderful book, Lean AI. What is the key message that you would say to people that have this anxiety around AI replacing their jobs? So, so what I would say to that question is that the is that the role of AI isn't really to replace jobs. It's it, it's really to help augment the, the roles that people are doing right now and, and, and try to improve the efficiency on the jobs that people are doing. Because at the end of the day, the key thing to remember is that AI or artificial intelligence was actually created by human intelligence. So it's really there created by humans to enable humans to become more efficient and 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 to focus more on doing things that that enable them to to provide more value to to the different companies that where they're working versus and and where AI does well and and helps humans is primarily around processing a lot of data because you know there's because when it comes to like um, taking a lot of data and trying to extract insights and value on what that data is saying and means it takes a lot of time it's it's very menial and manual uh, process. And, and that's where AI can really uh, outperform humans. But ultimately, once you know what the data is telling you, you really need that human intelligence to kind of take those insights and, and then figure out, you know, you know, what, what, what do you, you know, what can the company or, or, or people do with that to, to, to enhance the, the value that the, uh, that the business is looking to do uh, to grow. You know, that's so interesting. I, to me, that's one of the biggest you know, it's one of the biggest misconceptions around AI. What, what are some other misconceptions around AI other than it's going to replace my job? 
What is, what, what are you hearing? The, the, the other misconceptions is, is, I think it's really just the, the idea that most people don't haven't don't really know what AI actually is or, or does. So, you know, it a, a lot of it's really portrayed in the media where, you know, I mean, I mean, it makes great stories where you can make movies around all these robots taking over the planet. I mean, I mean, or, or you get people talking in the news around, you know, that, that, that AI is taking over jobs. I mean, those sort of things make a lot of headlines but but i think you know the biggest misconception is really just the fear and and you know uh it's you know and 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 instead of instead of looking at ai as as being kind of this unknown um technology that's out there it's like it it's like any other technology you know there's always uh, there's always benefits and 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 shortfalls to to any form of technology it's really about trying to learn how you can kind of use that technology to enable you know uh uh to make people's lives better and as long as it's used responsibly you know i think ai can provide a lot of value uh to not only um different companies that 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 use it but also you know what people don't realize is that we all use ai even today um uh, you know most most people spend a lot of time on um on the internet or on their mobile phones a lot of the apps that people use a lot of the recommendations that they get um when they for example go to amazon you know, around products to buy or or movies to watch, all of that is driven by AI nowadays. If you if if you're watching, um, if you go to your news sites, the content that you look at, you know, AI is really sort of um, driving a lot of that behind the scenes to 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 really get to know you better and to provide you better uh, recommendations to to make your life easier so that you don't have to go and search for things to try and figure out what you want. So a lot of the curation that that that's happening out there it's all driven through ai as is you know um trying to uh you know you know another benefit for ai right now unfortunately in this pandemic is that a lot of retail businesses aren't really able to function as well as they you know because it, because you know people can't really go into stores and that's where you know the e-commerce is really taken off but for, for a lot of the e-commerce business to really function well and function well being not only you know take the orders but but a big part of you know trying to cr make sure that they have the right products in stock to 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 fulfill those orders a lot of that is driven by ai because ai drives a lot of the predictions to really figure out you know what are people ordering what does the company need to have in stock so that you know it continues to fulfill those orders as well as understanding um you know diff um, um the different places in the um for example in the us where where people are, are wanting certain things more or less so so it's able to make sure that the supply chain is 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 optimized so that the products that where people need it most are getting to them i mean i mean those are just certain examples but you know it's yeah. it's it's really about you know just 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 identifying you know you know you know what are the problems that 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 you want to try to solve and figure out you know if if there's data that's involved in those problems then ai could be a really good tool that you could leverage to help you you know um solve those problems so you know it's ai that drives those algorithms that we hear about so much so like i i go buy a screwdriver and then all of a sudden i'm getting all these home improvement projects and the the case for the screwdriver and all the other screwdrivers that maybe yeah. is that AI that's driving those algorithms? Yeah. So AI, yeah, uh, yes, the, uh, for the most part, that, that is AI. Cause what, what AI is doing in that example is, you know, it knows that you just purchased a screwdriver and, and, and it's trying to like project out, you know, anybody that's brought a screwdriver in let's say the last uh, 30 days, what, you know, what, what, what are some other products that they're most likely to buy for like if it's to do with a home improvement project so that's when they start to create these projections or predictions like you know that that chester might be interested in in some of these other items so unfortunately yeah ai is you know uh, is is trying to come up with recommendations and, and follow you on the internet to try and get you to 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 think about other other ways you can use that 
precious little screwdriver that you just brought recently. But at the end of the day, you know, yeah. the other way to look at it is, 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 is that it's really helping that business too. That's right now that it's, that it's not only looking to survive, but I mean, it's looking to survive through, through this economic hardship. So, you know, the more that company can build a relationship with whoever's buying from them right now and, and, and try to increase that average um, order value of, of how much revenue they can get, not only helps that business sustain, um, you know, to survive, but it enables them to, to, to drive the revenue to keep the jobs in place for the people that, that fortunately can, you know, that they, they can keep employed versus having to lay those people off because the, the, the sales are going down. Right, right. Yeah, you know, it's interesting. Uh, my wife one time went and searched a bunch of stuff on my computer. And all of a sudden, I was being bombarded yeah. by like feminine hygiene products. And it was it was a little disturbing. Hey, uh, on that happy note, let's go to uh, Christy Lawrence in our co question command center. She's got a couple of great questions for you. Christy, would you like to sure. take it away? Yes, yes, I would. Oh, my goodness. We've got an amazing global audience today. There are people from South Carolina to South Africa, the Middle East, Saudi Arabia, and right here in McDonough, Georgia, Jennifer Kosha wants to know how AI will transform companies during and after this pandemic and what can companies do to be prepared? So first of all, a big shout out and hello to everyone joining this show from around the world. Uh, I've fortunately been to uh, uh, most of those countries you mentioned, and you know, it's, it's nice to see people joining from there. Uh, what I would say to answer the question, uh, so one thing that that that's going to that's that's starting to happen during this pandemic is that a lot of you know, a, a lot of the user behavior where 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 people were more on the fence around um, using digital for a bigger to play a bigger role in their lives. For example, you know. People that were more comfortable going to shop at retail have now been forced to adopt to to changing their purchase habits uh, to to buying more online. People that uh, so so what's what's going to happen? What, what's actually happening right now is that the 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 digital transformation is just being accelerated because more people are now starting to spend a, a greater part of their life online. Uh, and 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 in digital um, dig on digital platforms, um, primarily like your mobile phone or or, or your laptop, and and so that's um, going to force a lot of companies to really change their strategy as well to try and cater to to the changing user behavior that's happening out there uh, as well. So more companies that you know, for the most part, that didn't really make the initial investment to to really focus on creating a a, a personalized and, and and great user experience on 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 digital channels and now uh, taking a big step back to really uh, fast forward a lot of those things that they might have thought about doing maybe in the next couple of years and have starting to put those into place now because ultimately for any company to survive and and thrive through this, pandemic is, is is to shift with the change in user behavior that's happening in the marketplace and and that's where digital transformation is going is, is playing a big role because now you know with more people um, spending more of their life um, on digital channels there's just more so much more data that companies are getting around these users and 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 to really extract value and and react to that they just you know they they the easiest way to do that is is to embrace AI because AI will enable them to really get, um, be able to get a better handle on really understanding uh, uh, customer behavior and to react to that as well. Excellent, excellent. So Christian, I know you've got one more question. Go ahead. Yes, I do. We have um, a gentleman um, named Muhammad. He's in Qatar and he wants to know, can you give us an example of a company that's doing this really well. Um, a specific example of a company using AI for digital shopping that that um, is doing it really well right now. That's a really good question. Uh, you know, uh, the, the, the one company that uh, a lot of people are familiar with has been really doing this for a long time and people don't realize, and that's one of the reasons why it's become the biggest e-commerce company in the world, and that's Amazon. Because Amazon has been applying AI 
uh, and automation for a long time. And and anybody who shops on Amazon knows, for the most part, when you uh, when you when you go on there, you know they they're collecting all of this data around your purchasing behavior, and 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 for the most part, all of that data is being used for them to come up with recommendations. So when you, when you, when you go to, when you go to the Amazon um, and, and, and you're looking at different products, they're always giving you recommendations of other similar products. A lot of that is based on AI because 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 they look at user behavior on people that have looked at certain or browsed certain products. What are the other types of products that people are most likely to go and and either buy or or, or have a strong affinity to 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 consider and 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 so so that's one example. Another example is um, uh, is Netflix um, or, or these movie streaming services. What people don't realize is, for the most part, you know, again they they they're, they're aggregating all of this viewing um, data that people have, and 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 that's what enables them to curate these recommendations. Like when, when you log into your account there, even though it may not be e-commerce, but but they but their their goal is to to make sure that you continue to pay your subscription and you stick around and, and, and you and you stay as a customer. And the best way to do that is to make sure that that what they're tracking is how much time are you spending viewing um, content on 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 on, on their service. And and so what they try to do is, is is similar to what Amazon would do, which is you know they, they kind of look at your your previous viewing habits and 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 look at the type of uh, content uh, or genres of of movies or TV shows that you like, and and then they look at other people that that have liked those movie shows, and and they use those simple signals that a lot of people do, you know whether you do a thumbs up or a thumbs down, which 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 kind of provides. Um, uh, an intent that some, some, somebody who like this is also going to like that, and and that, and so you know, for the most part, you know, all all of that content that you get is really there to con to enable you to continue to keep watching. And and the other subtle thing I don't know if people have noticed because uh, because I used to work at a company called Roku back in two thousand and eight, and you know, Netflix was our first customer. We helped them sort of you know um, be, uh, when they started the streaming service. So I have a lot of uh, history on 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 how that whole business grew for for Netflix, but one thing if you notice now, you know, uh, versus previously, when when you start watching uh, movies on on Netflix on a streaming service, the movies would end. But now, it, when the movies end, and they're already giving you another movie that's going to start playing. So you know, unless you kind of you know uh, stop watching it it will just keep you going right and 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 so the idea is to just continue to 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 have you watching content and 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 not to even have that break where you can you know mentally sort of disconnect it's so funny that you mentioned that it happened just, just last night my wife and I watched a movie and they had <laughs> one queued up and ready to go like in 5 seconds yeah. right i'll tell you the other thing and uh, your example of Amazon, they really are ridiculously good at this. You know, I'll never forget, I was going to buy, you know, when I was flying a lot and I, I wanted these Bose canceling yeah. headphones and I just thought they were a little expensive, right? And I, I, although I had looked at it and I'd actually put it in the shopping cart twice and convinced myself yeah. I'm not going to do it. Here's what they did. And I know this was AI. They popped up and they said, yeah. you know, you've got X number of points on your American Express card. And if you use those, the Bose headphones will only cost you $35. And I went, yeah, you're right. I'm in, <laughs> you know, so I know that was part of that AI part, part of that algorithm. Hey, a quick question for you. And this is, you know, top of mind, we're, we're in the middle of the pandemic. You're talking about AI being able to process massive amounts of data. So is that, you know, when they're looking for a solution uh, for the, for the, um, the cure, is is that AI? Is that going to be able to accelerate us getting to a vaccine? Yeah, you know, I, uh, you know, I, you know, this, you know, th this is an example where AI can really help us accelerate um, f uh, f uh, finding a cure for 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 the, for the vaccine for COVID nineteen. Primarily because to get to the cure requires going through a number of different clinical trials where they're going to be, you know 
trying out uh, testing, uh, you know, uh, a different groups of people. And, 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 and generally when those tests have done, you know, you know, it, it takes a while to process the data in terms of like, you know, you know, how did somebody who got the, the vaccination react to somebody who, 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 who didn't get the vaccination and, 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 and how their bodies are behaving and, 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 and so, you know, AI is able to track and process that so quickly that it's it, it's enabling the scientists to really figure out, you know, um, how do you get closer to 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 get into the formula that's going to hopefully, you know, be a cure. The other thing that AI is really helping is is right now, you know, uh, if if you look at the entire world, it, it's tracking the outbreak where people are where the outbreaks are happening, and 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 by tracking all of that data on the outbreaks, it's also tracking back to what were those people doing, what are their ages, you know, uh, you know, what's their lifestyle, and you know, what, what what what's their typical health history, and by getting all of that data, it's it, it's trying to figure out, you know, which is how we, you know, um, you know, I mean, I mean where you know we see all of this um medical news that keeps coming out wearing a mask i mean for the most part that's because they they, they figured out pretty quickly through ai that it's spreading through you know um human contact and so you know that's 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 where that came in and 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 then the other thing was you know is this happening indoors or outdoors and, and they kind of figured out you know being in an indoor environment it kind of lives around for a couple of hours so all of this is really you know uh, all of this breaking news that we're getting is really happening because AI is working in the background to try and come up with these predictions around what is really causing this, how, you know, how can you potentially be a carrier versus how can you be uh, someone that's more likely to catch it? And then come up with predictions in terms of like age groups, like who's most high at risk and, you know, what precautions can be taken to ultimately reduce the, uh, the, the rate of, um, of, uh, people being impacted up by up this. Yeah. You know, Christy's yeah. got one more question from the Karen Center, and then we want to hear about, you know, where can we go to get more information on AI? But Christy, you've got a great COVID question. Go ahead. Right. One more. And it's a tag on from our previous um, question asker. Just wanted to know, could AI help with contact tracing to, to help to prevent the virus from traveling and spreading further? Yeah, that's, that, that's a really good question. And, you know, one AI can definitely help with that. It it's but the correct the, the bigger question is are people willing uh people open to sort of sharing their privacy data? Because because for the most part, you know, a large percentage of the world use mobile phones. And so in your mobile phones, you know, um, uh, you know, a the the mobile carriers and and the providers, whether it's like Apple or Google phones, have you know have have good location data in terms of where you are and 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 who, and where you're interacting. You know, if if people are open to sharing that data, then you know, then you know th they would be able to get a pretty good sort of visibility in in terms of if 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 somebody is is a potential carrier if you start being honest about sharing you know um you know your temperature and and, and some of the other history and 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 if you're in a vicinity where you could potentially be um you know uh, uh, uh close to people that might be you know uh carrying this and 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 to try and prevent that you know b being in areas where this could be a risk for you and 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 give you recommendations whether it, you should be trying to isolate yourself and to be less of a risk to yeah. in, in in terms of tracing and, and and passing that on. But you know the big question is uh, you know the data is there, but it's just sharing the pri people are open to sharing that type of privacy and uh, around their data. Yeah, and and privacy is a big issue, obviously, for a lot of people. Yeah. So one more question, yeah. and then we're going to go to your website stuff and and your three tips. But you know, you and I talked about this off air. AI in the elections. I mean, this is a big election year, and how are politicians and the various parties using AI to get to their constituents? Yeah. So this year, you know, more than any other year, you know, U.S. presidential election, it, it, it's going to be, um, you know done on digital channels. What I mean by that is that, you know, there's going to be, uh, you know, 
just based on you know it's not very safe to kind of be out uh, campaigning in in large crowds in it and so you, you know a lot a lot of the advertising that generally was on like tv radio billboards and print or newspapers a lot of that budget that politicians have been spent to try and use for campaigning is going to be done on online channels and where ai is really helping is for the most part you know it it's it's helping politicians right now just just based on you know uh, the news cycle is so so real time you know every you know um, and, and and with ai it's enabling them to really get a good pulse on you know how people are feeling about different different things especially like the economy the, the health uh you know what are issues that really matter to people and not only that what are the issues that matter to people in different parts of the uh, of the country because you know what might matter to somebody for example in california is going to be a little different to what might matter to somebody in um in georgia and so you know ai is able to differentiate you know what what are those issues and if and 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 that's what really dictates the message if you if you notice with with with, with the different candidates you know they have different messages based on the audience that they're talking to and ai is really enabling them to to get on point on on, on touching on the right emotional issues that will enable them to connect with the uh, with with the potential voters and the other thing that ai is, gonna, a, is is really the, and and then the other thing that ai yeah, is really helping uh, the other piece i was going to say is, is is that where ai is is helping is 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 helping to find the right types of users that they should be targeting with those ads to try and get their message right. you know that uh, across to based on those issues yeah Social networks. Okay, so uh, where can we learn more about AI and more about you? What website should we direct people to? Yeah, so you know, uh, for, for me, I have a blog uh, where, where, I, where I write a lot of content around this whole area of AI and digital transformation. It's pretty, it's pretty easy. It's just my name. It's Lomit Patel.com. That's one place people can find me. Another place where I uh, where, where I publish a lot of snackable content by snack i mean you know you know it's it, it's really easy to digest content uh daily and that's on linkedin so anybody can follow me on linkedin just just reach out to me uh on linkedin and connect with me you know uh, i'm happy to connect with anyone that's that's another good place to find me and um and and then the third uh, you know place is 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 really there's a lot of you know, there's a lot more detail about everything, everything that I'm talking about around AI and digital transformation, but primarily about how, you know, people can use AI to 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 really make a profound difference to to growing any size business, whether it's a small business or a large business, and and that's in my book, Lean AI. Lean AI available, on, available Amazon. on Amazon. Okay, so here, yeah, here is the lightning round. There we go, Lean AI. Lightning round. Three things around AI. You've got 60 seconds. What are three things that our listeners can take away from uh, from your message? What are three things they should use to leverage AI? Go. First is that um, data is really your superpower. So you know, uh, in order to really be successful with AI, it really starts with data. So so make sure that you that, that you start collecting this customer data and 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 start harvesting that. The second key message is that AI isn't really there to replace jobs, but it's really there to enable businesses to to get more efficient around either saving money or or, or, or making money. And and it, and it ultimately AI really enables um, works really well with with human intelligence. So you know have you know have you know having a way to to embrace AI is really important. And and the third and most important is that you know, digital transformation has already started in companies. So the ones that don't get on this right now are going to get left behind. But the best way to secure your role and, and, and your job security is to become a champion for AI. You know, you know, you know, be one of those early adopters that really wants to be the person in your company that that that's trying to help, you know, um, bring this revolution to pass because because then you'll be able to 
provide a lot of because you know this is going to happen with or without you it, it's better to be on you know ahead of the curve and, and be one of the ones that wants to bring it in versus the one that's trying to fight the resistance against it and 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 and, and ultimately you you know that that will dictate whether you're going to be having a job you know good job security in the future as well excellent so track your data ai isn't replacing people's jobs and be an ai champion Loma, thank you so much. His book is available on Amazon, Lean AI. It's also follow him at Lomit Patel on, on his website and always on LinkedIn. You know, you've been a delight to be a guest. Thank you so much. Stick around because we're going to talk to you a little bit after the show. Well, listen, we always like to have a word from our sponsor. You know, it's Leading with Gratitude. So it's all about our book. And we want to give a shout out to our wonderful sponsor, Harper Business Books. I just want to make sure I said that right. Uh, available at Amazon as well. Well, listen. Uh, our next guest is going to be Nick Bradley. Nick is a world-renowned business growth and scale-up specialist who helps exceptional business leaders unlock their full potential. We're here every Tuesday and Thursday at 1 o'clock, same bad time, same bad channel. I want to say thank you to our Question Command Center, Christy Lawrence down there in Atlanta, Georgia with the great earrings, the world's greatest online producer, Brent Klein in Austin, Texas. And by the way, if you need a great production, a great show like this, the Methods folks are great. You can contact Brent. And you know, if you're looking for a life of gratitude at work and at home, the roadmap is clearly Leading with Gratitude. Follow us on LinkedIn. Link, uh, we've got leadingwithgratitudebook.com. Join us there and follow us. You know, we always say, look, give us 30 minutes. We'll give you great information, great inspiration, and your own personal roadmap to a life of gratitude at work and at home. You know, I hope you're staying safe, wear your mask, wash your hands. We're grateful for our time with you today and look forward to seeing you again soon. Take care, that's my story and I'm sticking to it. Cheers. <laughs>